Hey everyone, uh, thanks Maria for the introduction. Um, I'm part of Meta's host networking team and on behalf of all the collaborated list, collaborators listed in the, in, the, in the slide here, I'm gonna present our experience deploying DCTCP across the Meta data center fleet. The agenda of the talk is as follows. I'll, I'll quickly cover DCTCP's relevance in our network and some wins we saw after the rollout. Then I'd switch gears to talk about how we uh, made this change and one interesting problem we, we observed. Lastly, some follow-ups and uh, some takeaways for this community. Okay, uh, DCTCP is a mature congestion control algorithm that is well studied and has proven efficiency wins in, in other production networks. DCTCP superpower comes from its ECN signal. ECN uh, indicates the, the current queue occupancy. So how does this work? Uh, you configure uh, an ECN threshold on the switch queues, and when the threshold is reached, the switch marks packets with the congestion experienced bit, and uh, these, uh, when, when the sender sees the, the congestion experienced bit, the rate of it actually, it, it can detect the, the level of congestion in the network and, and thus react to it. So the, uh, I've referenced the original DCTCP paper in, in, in the slide. Um, it's a great read for anyone who wants to understand more about the, the protocol. Um, another important point for us was that DCTCP was readily available in the Linux kernel for us to experiment with. Okay. Um, for background, Meta operates over 20 data, center, data centers with varying hardware configuration. Now zooming into one data center, we have thousands of services running in a shared server pool. Sometimes um, service scheduling can, can cause uh, latency and throughput sensitive services to coexist on a single rack. And, and these racks can also have shallow buffers. We believe that DCTCP can, can help here by moderating the switch buffer usage. We had run some exten extensive small-scale experiments uh, to measure DCTCP performance, and we published some of this in a LPC talk in uh, 2018. I have the reference in the, in the paper. Okay, now uh, we've seen uh, what DCTCP uh, means in the in test. Now this is what we saw once we rolled it out uh, across our entire fleet. From the, from the network perspective, we could, we could see that the retransmission rate had a significant drop of around 75%. Now looking at services, taking one service as an example, uh, one latency sensitive service as an example, we saw that, uh, we, we saw 38% drop in the P90 and P99 latencies. We even conducted a, a, a reverse experiment. We went ahead and disabled the CDCP across an entire region, and uh, we saw that there was a significant increase in retransmissions, and also uh, we, we saw a drop in throughput. You can find the details of, of this and, and other results in our paper if you're interested. Okay. Uh, next, uh, talking about enablement, uh, enabling a condition control should be straightforward, right? Um, especially DCTCP. The, the ingredients for DCTCP were, were already there. Almost every switch in our network supports CCN. And uh, the Linux kernel provides multiple interfaces to change the condition control algorithm. But our experience showed that both these steps were much more in, involved than what we had hoped for. And the rest of the talk is going to uh, dive into these nuances. Okay, um, let me first talk about some high-level goals that we had before we started this, this rollout. First, uh, to keep DCTCP specific to short RTD connections, we had to selectively change the CCA. Uh, a nuance here is that we had to detect the RTT before the very first SYN packet goes out because that's where ECN is negotiated. Next, we wanted to change the condition control at, at an entire region scale at one shot. Uh, this is important because we did not want to have ECN and loss space condition controls coexist in, in the same queues. Uh, we do not have the luxury of allocating dedicated queues for different condition controls because queues have, are used for other purposes. I'll talk about this in, in a later slide. Next, we wanted to minimize complexity. Our data centers support, supported thousands of services and a CCA change had to work for all the services. We also wanted to minimize dependency. Uh, configuring a CCA should be independent of, of network costs. It, it should also not expect services to, to restart. Lastly, we wanted to have a fail open and a fail fast design. 
the, the idea is we, we didn't want to bring down the network if a condition control tuning failed. Uh, with, with this um, goals in mind, let's look at all the uh, kernel options, all the options in, in Linux set that we explored. Um, quickly, we could make a user do a setsoc opt call, but having a library deployed for every service is, is, is time consuming. We could also, uh, the kernel supports syscuttle defaults, but this doesn't enable us to uh, select CCA for a subset of connections. So the two options we, we could work with are changing the routing table or using eBPF. Routing tables totally, uh, routes totally work. We even prototyped this, uh, this approach of, of configuring, changing the CCA for specific routes. But we didn't want to mess with uh, changing the routing tables for every CCA change. BPF became our, our preferred choice and uh, because it had the right amount of flexibility we needed to, uh, to customize when to enable uh, CC. Um, so we, we came up with two different versions of, uh, um, of, of BPF programs to support, support different C group versions. It, it, eventually we ended up de deprecating one C group and, and we had a single CCA selector that, that we could use. Um, so in, in the last slide, we, we looked at a couple of different CCA selector options. Um, one common thing is uh, the, most of these options work at the start of a connection. But uh, with extensive uh, monitoring that we built, we saw that uh, there were connections in our data centers that, that ran for days or longer. Uh, this, break, th this broke our uh, instantaneous enablement goal that, that, that we had. So how do we solve this? Um, for the initial few uh, region rollouts, we uh, coupled DCTCP enablement with a disaster recovery uh, framework that, that Meta had built. So this framework had all the inter-service dependencies en uh, encoded, so we could go ahead and, and uh, run phases of, of, of trains and with that achieve, uh, flip majority of the connections in the region and achieve close to uh, instant, uh, an instantaneous rollout. Later, with eBPF powers, we were able to uh, build a, a program that could iterate through all the connections and change uh, the condition control dynamic ad hoc. I, I'll talk about this in, in the next slide. So let's, this is, uh, this uh, uh, flowchart covers our entire uh, stack, uh, enablement stack. So let's start with uh, TCP socket being opened. Uh, as it goes through the TCP state machine, uh, a TCP BPF program gets called. And here we can run a custom selection logic and make a set sock opt call similar to what user space can do. Um, as part of this call, we, we even have the power to set a BPF based condition control through the struct tops interface that, that I've shown as number two. Uh, lastly, to handle long lived connections and to, uh, to minimize multiple versions of CCA existing, we have a user triggered uh, iterator that can iterate through all the connections and, and uh, run the same logic as, uh, as a TCP BPF program. Uh, along, with all the EP, along with all the programs, we also had a um, user space uh, agent that was integrated with the Meta stack that can manage all the network BPF programs. This enabled us to treat CCA uh, just like any other software that, that we have in our um, stack. Um, lastly, all the eBPF interfaces I've listed here and, and what we use have been upstreamed by our awesome kernel team and are available for anyone to use. Okay, we discussed uh, on the host, let's look at the, the switch. Um, we found that uh, tar, TARs and, and specifically top of the rack downlink ports were the most congested in our networks. Um, so, so each queue in the, in the TAR, uh, the queues are generally dedicated for network costs. Um, so to isolate congestion control, we had to, let's say for, for two different congestion controls, we had to use 2x the number of queues that, that were currently there. This is not possible in some switch implementations. So what we did is uh, we ended up uh, coming up with thresholds which could put long RTT cubic and short RTT DCTCP on the same queue. Um, this was suboptimal for, for both classes of CCA, but we made sure that the CCAs can coexist. Uh, we also had uh, interesting observations with, with the A ASICs themselves. Um, we, for, for more details about this, refer to, to the paper. Okay, let me take one, uh, one, one example. So after we rolled out DCTCP to, to, to our first region, a service had, uh, had, had, a, had a, a problem. They were seeing elevated connection timeouts. So, uh, okay. Uh, so what was happening? We looked at all the metrics in the, in the system. We 
uh, the throughput looked fine, retransmission looked normal, but with, with our eBPF monitoring, we were able to pinpoint that Synax, where uh, the, the, the service had elevated Synax retransmits. Now, using TCP dump, we could see that uh, the Synax packets were not ECT marked. So, uh, the, the problem was, without ECT marked, as, as shown in the figure, uh, the Synax packets uh, fall on the tail drop threshold part of the, of the queue, and thus can randomly be dropped. And then the service uh, has to do a, a timeout. So we fixed this, uh, we, we first had a hack to continue our rollout. We had another BPF program that could detect intra-region Synac packets and, and force the ECT bit on them. But we also upstreamed the actual fix, which was to um, look at the ECT bit from the requester socket than the listening socket. Okay, uh, so we rolled out DCT speed to the entire uh, meta fleet. What next? So we, 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 we unlocked a lot of other a uh, new set of problems that we had not thought of before. Uh, first, we saw that DCTCP struggles when you have short and heavy uh, bursty incasts. In some of our, in some cases, we saw incasts all the way down to a single top of the rack, synchronized incast to a top of the rack switch. Uh, we solved this with a flow control knob from the receiver. Uh, this knob overrides the C wind uh, with the uh, R wind setting, and we were able to calculate these thresholds based on uh, the incast patterns that services were seeing. Second, uh, not all hotspots were ECN friendly. Uh, for instance, uh, what do you do if there is congestion on the, uh, on the shared buffer of, of a NIC, or if the condition is, or worse, if the condition is actually on the host? Um, so we, we found, playing with BPF and, and, uh, and the condition control, uh, we were able to uh, bring in delay as, a con as, a, as an additional signal, and we saw that this was able to mitigate some of the shortcomings of, of ECN. Okay, um, this concludes, uh, uh, this is a quick summary of what, uh, uh, what we discovered when, when we tried to roll out uh, a CCA change. Um, there are many other interesting details in, in, the, in the paper about ASIC designs, buffer allocation schemes, uh, NIC GRO, and, and interaction with other uh, condition controls, uh, etc. If you're interested, please refer to the paper for these details. Uh, much of the uh, CCA, okay. Uh, much of the CCA research is focused on uh, stable state, uh, but understanding coexistence with other condition control and, and transition performance helps, uh, helps because a CCA change is not just a flip of a switch. Uh, heterogeneity is pervasive in the DC network. Um, if, we relayed, if a CCA relied on heavily tuned parameters and did not have graceful degradation, this makes it harder for us to deploy. Uh, in our case, having good enough ECN thresholds enabled us to move forward. Uh, hotspots can, can occur anywhere in the network, and CCA should have good fallbacks. Um, one example is that NIC was a hotspot where we could not have ECN configured. Uh, though this was suboptimal, we are thankful that this did not break our uh, deployment. Okay. Uh, we hope that our, our, our experience deploying BCTCP guides researchers um, design new CCAs with an eye towards real-world deployments. With, with this, I'll, I'll open to questions. And these are some questions that, things that I had in the slide, but I took off because of time, but yeah.